TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett holds his first official meeting with U.S. President Joe Biden. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi emphasizes that his government will refuse to tie its efforts to lift U.S. sanctions to the economic well-being of the Iranian people. Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz confirms that hundreds of thousands of missiles, including precision-guided munitions, are directed at Israel from its northern enemies. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett held his first official meeting with U.S. President Joe Biden at the White House earlier this afternoon after their pre-scheduled meeting yesterday was postponed over a heinous terror attack in Afghanistan that claimed the lives of scores of individuals, including 15 American service members. After President Biden concluded his engagements vis-à-vis -vis the deadly Afghan incident at the Situation Room, the American president called the Israeli premier last night and thanked him for his understanding for the need to reschedule and said that he was looking forward to their next day meeting. In response, Bennett seized the opportunity to express his deep condolences for the deaths of the American troops, doing so in the name of the state and people of Israel. Meanwhile, today's long-anticipated face-to-face meeting, which began roughly three and a half hours ago, was set to focus on efforts to refine the alignment of Washington and Jerusalem's policies on common bilateral interests related to the Middle East and beyond, with chief focus on the Islamic Republic of Iran. However, it is too early to report what fruit may have been produced from their extensive discussions. It is worth mentioning that while Jerusalem regards the 2015 multilateral nuclear agreement with Iran as an obsolete mechanism that does not meet necessary demands to thwart Iran's quest to weaponize its nuclear program, the United States continues to maintain that mutual return to compliance with the deal by both Washington and Tehran remains a robust interest of the United States. However, two senior intelligence sources who've spoken to TV7 on condition of anonymity confirmed that the Biden administration has demanded of the Ayatollah regime to provide written assurances that it would engage in consequent negotiations on its ballistic missiles program, the so-called delivery system of nuclear warhead, as well as its activities throughout the Middle East and Central Asia, which Washington, alongside its global and regional allies and partners, regard as a root cause of severe instability. However, the new Iranian president, Ibrahim Raisi, whose hardline cabinet, that is partly comprised of ministers wanted by Interpol for severe terror-related offenses, does not intend to acquiesce to the American demand. During a parliamentary session on Wednesday that sought the approval of the list of ministerial nominees, President Raisi emphasized that while the Islamic Republic, under his leadership, will work to lift U.S. sanctions on the regime and its institutions, it will refuse to tie its efforts to the economic well-being of the Iranian people. <laughs> عزت و حکمت و مسلحت محور ماست حقوق حقه ملت بزرگوار ایران و منافع ملت ایران مسئله محوری ماست The Iranian president, who in practice serves as Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei's chief advisor on matters of state, further highlighted that when it comes to Tehran's regional activities, his new government plans to cooperate with Iran's neighbors based on the rightful rights and benefits of the Iranian people, yet stopped short from explaining what those so-called rights entail. Meanwhile, at the Austrian capital, Vienna, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov met with the International Atomic Energy Agency Director General Rafael Mariano Grossi and discussed, among other topics, the situation related to the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action to resolve the Iranian nuclear program. 
Per a Russian foreign ministry statement during the meeting, a high level of mutual understanding and cooperation between the Russian Federation and the IAEA was demonstrated. Separately, it is important to know that prior to the meeting with the IAEA Director General, Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova stressed in a written statement that Iran's enrichment of uranium metal of up to 20% and enrichment of uranium of up to 60%, which have little to none civic applications, is yet another Iranian deviation from the 2015 nuclear agreement. And while Moscow understands that these Iranian steps were largely due to the lack of concrete and practical results of efforts to restore the full implementation of the nuclear deal, it is concerned that these actions would further alienate all parties involved from reviving the so-called JCPOA, which is the acronym of the technical term of the nuclear agreement. The foreign ministry spokeswoman further insisted that the only way out of the current situation is the earliest possible resumption of the negotiations process to revive the JCPOA. In other yet related news, Russian President Vladimir Putin met with Jordanian King Abdullah II earlier this week on the sidelines of an international military technical forum titled Army 2021, which is annually hosted by Russia at the Patriot Congress and Exhibition Center next to Moscow. We are very glad to see you, Your Majesty. Of course, we включая то, чем мы с вами совместно занимаемся на протяжении многих лет, это нормализация ситуации в Сирии и обострившаяся ситуация сейчас в Афганистане. King Abdullah, who met President Putin more than a dozen times since he became monarch of Israel's eastern neighbor in 1999, voiced his deep appreciation of Moscow's role in the Middle East and asserted his keen interest in deepening their bilateral relations in multiple fields of common interest. We uh, look uh, tremendously to the role that you and Russia plays in our region uh, as a, an element of stability with the challenges that we have. Making a sharp turn to the United Nations headquarters in New York City, where UN spokesman Stefan Dujeric voiced a global institution's concern over the situation in Lebanon and urged leadership in Beirut to urgently form an active government of national unity, which is a Western prerequisite for crucial relief at a time when the country's economy is rapidly deteriorating. The Secretary General calls on all Lebanese political leaders to urgently form an effective government of national unity that can bring immediate relief justice and accountability to the people of Lebanon and also drive an ambitious and meaningful course for reform to restore access to basic services, restore stability, promote sustainable development and inspire hope for a better future for Lebanon and its people. Dujeric's statement comes amid warnings by the United Nations envoy for Lebanon that the country is already at the beginning of a serious collapse. However, according to Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz in his briefing to foreign ambassadors in Israel earlier this week, the deepening crisis in Lebanon is being exploited by Hezbollah, which seeks to perpetuate the current situation. Hezbollah is taking advantage of the crisis and destabilizing Lebanon. Inside, he doesn't allow them to build a new government. He doesn't allow them to move forward with, uh, with the government they actually need. The deepening state of disarray in Lebanon is evidently bolstering Hezbollah's ability to broaden Iranian influence in the deprived country, which has long suffered from deep-rooted corruption amongst Beirut's political class. And while Israel does not seek war with Lebanon, Iranian efforts to bolster its proxies along Israel's northern front may inevitably force Jerusalem's hand. We know that there are hundreds of thousands of PGMs or, or missiles to include PGM that are aiming at us. Uh, every couple of houses in southern Lebanon serves as a weapons storage. And uh, Hezbollah is actually holding the Lebanese citizens as hostages. It's unstable. It's true, it's true that it's mostly quiet as far as we are, we are concerned, but it's unstable. There is a continuous 
force buildup in Lebanon to include PGMs that they are producing on the soil of Lebanon. It's very sensitive and it's very explosive. And we have said before, and I will repeat it now, that we demand from Lebanon statehood responsibility. It's not a conflict that we will have with Hezbollah only. It's a conflict that we will have with the state of Lebanon to include Hezbollah in it. And this is something that we must bear in mind. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up the continent of Africa in prayer for its people's salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Essen, wishing you an Erev Tov, Shabbat Shalom and we will see you again on Monday at the same time.